everyone, it's Haley and happy Bookmas day one. Welcome to Bookmas 2021. I am so excited that Bookmas is finally here. I mean, I say finally, but it also feels like I just did Bookmas 2020. Literally this year has just absolutely flown by, but today we are going to be kicking off my month worth of videos with the books that I'm hoping to read this coming month. So I have a lot of really great books here, specifically Specifically, I have a lot of holiday themed ones that I'm really excited for, so let's get into it. Before we get into the holiday ones, I actually wanted to start off with the ones that I'm planning on reading for reading vlogs this month. So as part of Bookmas, I do have three vlogs that I'm doing, and the only one that I can actually like pick the books for is the first one. And for that vlog, I'm going to be reading some of the books that I didn't get the chance to get to that were on my five star predictions list from last year. So books that I really thought I was going to love. I did actually get to a lot of the books in that video, which I was kind of surprised to see when I was going back to see what I might read, but there definitely are some that I just didn't get the chance to get to, and I picked three of them, and I picked the three most like attainable ones, I felt, because there's definitely some fantasies and stuff on there, and a little bit of bulkier books, but I wanted to be kind of realistic with the books that I was picking. So the first five-star prediction that I have is With You All the Way by Cynthia Hand. I'm kind of skeptical about this one now. When I was talking about it last year, I don't think it was out yet and I was anticipating it and I felt like I was really going to enjoy it because I have enjoyed Cynthia Hand's contemporaries in the past. She is actually the author of this like Angel series that I read way back in the day and I also liked that one but she now has written quite a few more serious contemporaries that have a very different tone than her other series and I have read all of them I'm pretty sure to date except for this one and I just based on that based on the author and how I felt about her other contemporaries I felt like this one was going to be a win but since it's released I've kind of seen some mixed reviews for it and not that reviews mean anything but I wasn't so sure about the synopsis once I read it and that has kind of left me a little bit more skeptical. So this is about a girl who essentially she wants to lose her virginity and she has seen like her mother has cheated on her father, she has seen just how much sex has just made like everything fall apart in her family and how big of a deal it is. She tried to lose her virginity with her boyfriend but it ended up being humiliating so now she just wants to kind of rip off the band-aid and do it. So I'm not exactly sure what the story is going to entail. It definitely seems like a really unique topic. I'm just kind of skeptical about it but that's kind of why I want to read it because I thought I was going to love it and now I'm not so sure so I guess we'll have to see. The other book from my five star predictions list is The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. I really think that this one is going to be a five star book for me because it just sounds fascinating and I really enjoyed the other book that I have read by this author last year. So she's the author of Slay, which I just loved. I think I read that last year. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I'm probably gonna be doing that a lot in these bookmas videos because this year has just been such a whirlwind. Like, I simultaneously feel like I moved here yesterday but then I also feel like I moved like two years ago. So it's so hard for me to keep track of time because it just like so much has been happening. So I apologize for that in advance. But this one is about a boy who he has the ability to see the future of things that he touches. So he ends up touching his brother and sees his brother's imminent tragic death. So he has to live with that knowledge and see what he's going to do with it. Like I, I'm so scared to read this one because I think it's going to be really powerful and obviously very heartbreaking, but I think it's going to be a very important read as well. So I'm simultaneously really excited for it, but also like absolutely terrified for it. But I do really trust Brittany Morris after reading her first book and really enjoying it. So I think this one is going to be a hit as well. All right, and the last book for that reading vlog that I have that I might pick up is An Emotion of Great Delight by Tahara Mafi. This is Tahara Mafi's latest contemporary release. She has quite a few books. I'm sure you've heard of her before, but her only other contemporary is, what is it called? A Very Large Expansive Sea. And now 
actually came out with this one this past year and I haven't gotten the chance to get to it but it's definitely one that I have been wanting to. So this is going to be a really emotional story for sure because it follows a character who is just experiencing so many struggles in her life. It's 2003 so the US has officially declared war on Iraq and there have been a rise in hate crimes and anti-Islamic sentiments and this main character is trying to deal with that all while her family is kind of falling apart. She feels like she's losing everyone she loves. So I feel like this is obviously going to be a really emotional one but I think it could be really powerful too. Now getting to the holiday books that I have here. I only have one week where I have dedicated to reading holiday books for a vlog but that being said there is like an extra week of bookmas where I'm going I'm not doing a vlog because I'm going to be going back home to see my family for Christmas but I will probably like try and get to some of these holiday reads. I'm also filming this one on November 20th so I will probably try and get to them before December even starts because I have a really great stack here. <laughs> like there, I don't know what it is this year. It just seems that there have been so many really nice and cute holiday books coming out and I have just been weak and not able to resist any of them. So my pile has drastically grown, but I also have a couple that I didn't get the chance to get to last year. So the first book that I have here is The Matzo Ball by Jean Meltzer. This was actually sent to me earlier in the year and I have just been waiting for this time of year to read it. It follows a girl who is obsessed with Christmas. She's a Jewish girl and she has been writing these Christmas books and her publisher actually requests that she does something a little bit different, a little bit more diverse and writes a Hanukkah themed romance and all of a sudden she just feels like she has no inspiration. She loves Christmas and everything surrounding it but when it comes to writing a Hanukkah love story she feels feels like she doesn't know what to write. So she goes to the matzo ball, which is a Hanukkah celebration, and tries to find her muse and some inspiration for the story. But along the way, she also finds her arch nemesis that she knew earlier in her life. So we've got a little bit of enemies to lovers here, but we also have some Christmas, some Hanukkah stuff. Like this just sounds absolutely amazing. So I'm really looking forward to it. The next few books are ones that I had last year that I didn't get the chance to get to. I got to a couple of Christmas Eve reads last year, but I was having a really hard time with the holidays last year since, I mean, COVID and everything was at an all-time high and no one was really vaccinated and because of that I wasn't able to see my family on Christmas which as someone who loves Christmas and like my favorite part about it is seeing my family it was really hard and I wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. So I think that also might be why this year I have so many Christmas books that I just want to read because like things are back to normal. I get to see my family and that just makes me really happy but because I wasn't in the mood for it I do have a few books that ended up just coming to this year. So we have Royal Holiday by Jasmine Gilroy. I think this sounds so great. It sounds like it could be absolutely adorable. It is following a character who she goes with her daughter to London, England. Her daughter has gotten a job at the palace for the royals and she decides like what better way? I mean I would take up that opportunity to go and be in London, England for Christmas in a palace. Like that just sounds amazing. But while she's there she ends up following for this guard and like I just love that. I'm so excited. It just sounds so cute. I pretty much love anything with royalty. I'm a sucker for that. And combine that with the holidays, it's a recipe for success for sure. Next I have Comfort and Joy by Kristen Hanna. This was at Costco last year and Kristen Hanna is the author of The Nightingale, which I really love. That's one of my absolute all-time favorite books. So when I saw she had a Christmas book, I was like all over it. But it definitely kind of has mixed reviews. So We'll see how I feel about it. I think I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure that she published this before The Nightingale and then with the success of The Nightingale, they ended up reprinting it, but I could be totally wrong on that one. But it is a Christmas fable. So it's about a woman who loves Christmas. It's her favorite time of year, but then she ends up getting divorced and now she's not really feeling the holidays so much. She ends up booking a plane ticket to the Pacific Northwest to try and have a better holiday and there she ends up meeting this young boy who recently lost his mother and his father who is 
completely closed off from the world from that. I get a lot of like Hallmark movie vibes from it. Also, I think that synopsis was pretty terrible. Like my words got all mixed up, but you get the idea of it. So this is definitely a really short one and should be really quick to read. And hopefully it'll be good. We'll see. Then I also have the 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenny Baitlis. This is the last book that I have that I picked up last year, but I actually kind of forgot about this one until I took out my decorations because I pack my Christmas books with my decorations for my shelves here. So I completely forgot about this one. So I'm just gonna read the back. I mean, I'm not gonna read the back, but I'm going to live synopsize for you. So this is about Kate Turner and she doesn't really have an interest in relationships. She is living in this really small, English town. I feel like so many of these Christmas books are British. I don't know if that's just me, but it just seems to be a thing. I'm not sure why. But she has found fulfillment in her career as a designer and in her delicious side job baking for her old friend Matt's neighborhood cafe. Oh, I remember this one now. So then her best friend ends up signing her up for a dating agency that promises to help singles find love before the holidays. So with 23 days until Christmas, there's 12 dates with 12 different men. That sounds so great. This definitely is giving me like 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston vibes, which I read a couple years ago and I really loved that one. It's a great YA Christmas story, but I'm excited for an adult version and also with a character who's not really interested in romance. That sounds really cute and amazing and definitely down for that. Now the rest of the books here are all new from this year. So they have just been published this year and like I just, I was weak. I couldn't resist it. So first we have Eight Perfect hours by Leah Louise. This follows two characters who end up spending eight hours together. They end up spending this night together because they're actually trapped in a blizzard and it's a great night that they have together and they think I mean, it's the only time they're really going to see each other. Life kind of has other plans. So this sounds like it has the potential to be very adorable and a lot of fun. And I'm just so excited for all these Christmas reads, honestly. Next is The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. This follows two identical twin sisters. And the one, Charlie, she has been working in LA on this baking show, but she ends up actually getting hit on the head on set. And then she loses her sense of taste and smell, which is obviously pretty important when you're working as a baker. Now her sister Cass has been trying to get her life back together after this horrible breakup and she also is running the family's bakery. Now the two of them are very unhappy with where they are in life at the moment so they make the decision to actually switch places. So you've got a little bit of parent trap vibes there, a little bit of the holiday vibes and they switch places and obviously that ends up being kind of a bad decision like there's some repercussions from that. But also the Christmassy part is that it's they switch places in the days leading up to Christmas. That was an important part. <laughs> I feel like so many of these books remind me of like Hallmark Christmas movies, which is very ironic because I don't really like Hallmark Christmas movies all that much. There's like a couple that I've enjoyed, but for the most part, I'm not a big fan of them. So I find it really funny that I like reading books that are pretty much the same thing. Next, I have a couple of YA ones. I feel like most of the Christmassy reads tend to be more adorable adult, but next is Blame It on the Mistletoe by Beth Garrett. Well, the last book was Holiday Vibes. This one is actually kind of like a holiday retelling. This follows a social media star who is determined to get some good content, so she tries to find a British follower to actually switch places with for the holidays. Now, the character that she ends up switching places with is a follower of hers who just has been through like this humiliating mistletoe disaster and feels like this switch could be the opportunity for her to kind of get over that and still enjoy the holidays because Christmas is like her favorite time of year. So they end up switching places, but obviously if you've seen the holiday, you kind of know how that's going to go. We've got a charming brother, a charming neighbor, and you know, it's going to be an interesting situation, but the holiday is actually one of my favorite Christmas movies. I mean, there's so many favorites, so like I hesitate to say that, but I do really like watching the holiday. So I think this is going to be a really great one that I probably will like a lot too. Next is another YA Christmas story, and that is So This Is Christmas by Tracy Andreen. This attracted me because of the title. I just start singing the song in my head all the time. But this story is actually set in Christmas, Oklahoma. So the main character has 
has told this guy that she knows that like Christmas Oklahoma it's this idyllic place Christmas all the time like it's just you know Christmassy vibes that it's the perfect place to spend Christmas but that's not actually the reality of it so when he ends up actually going there she has to try and turn Christmas Oklahoma into everything that she told him it was going to be. Next is Nick and Noel's Christmas Playlist by Cody Hall. Definitely, you know, this makes you think of Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, but we have Nick and Noel's Christmas Playlist. I love that, that's so cute. Also, look at the little bloodhound on the cover, like the little dog. I just, I saw the dog and I was like, this just looks so cute and I need it. So Nick and Noelle are best friends. So we have friends to lovers, which is like my absolute favorite. But Nick ends up finding out that his girlfriend is not who she thought he thought she was. And he works on this Christmas tree farm and Noelle comes and is trying to help him actually enjoy the holidays. But then they end up kissing and like obviously that kind of complicates things. So it says, if Noelle can turn Nick's blue Christmas merry and bright, this might be the last Christmas, Nick spends with a broken heart. This year, they'll be rocking around the Christmas tree as a couple, as long as Nick's ex doesn't go standing under any mistletoe. I read that because it has the Christmas songs in it, so I felt like it was appropriate, but ooh, I'm so excited for this one. It has such like holly jolly vibes and everything that I want from a Christmas romance. And the last Christmas ebook that I have here is The Holiday Switch by Tiff Marcello. So I actually have read a Tiff Marcello book before. I think most of the these books apart from Comfort and Joy. I haven't really read anything by those authors before, but Tiff Marcello, earlier this year I read her adult romance, what is it called? The Key to Happily Ever After, I think? It's about sisters who run like a wedding shop, but I did enjoy that. So then when I saw she had a new book out, I was like, ooh, and it's a Christmas book and it's a YA Christmas book. I was like, double ooh, and then I ended up picking it up, obviously. I don't know why there's so much switching and swapping and all of these these books, but that seems to be the case. So in this case, we have a character who is working to get some extra cash at an inn during the holidays. And it's actually this inn was the setting of this great holiday movie. And she also is moonlighting as a book blogger. So that's really cool. But while she's at this inn, she ends up having to deal with the devastatingly handsome, but also very annoying nephew of the inn owner. So obviously we've got, you know, a little bit of a romance blooming there, if you will. Okay. So that is all for Bookmas Day 1. Those are all the books that I'm hoping to get to this holiday season. Ooh, we're gonna see how this is gonna go because like that's that's a big list. But the good news is that these Christmassy type reads usually are pretty quick for me. I read them relatively quickly. So as long as I can stay on track with like work and everything, I should be able to get to most of these. I hope I can get to all of them, but like I'm just, I'm trying to be realistic here. So please, please let me know what you are planning on reading this December, whether it's like holiday books or not, I would love to know. And tomorrow I'm actually going to be giving you guys some holiday book recommendations. So if you were looking for some Christmassy holiday books to add to your TBR to read this time of year, then I've got you covered. And if you don't want to miss any of the days of Bookmas, don't forget to click that subscribe button and then click that bell icon so you'll be notified whenever I post. I'm putting up new videos every single day for the entire month of December, but after that I put up new videos three to four times a week, so there's always content coming. But thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Happy Bookmas Day 1, and I will see you tomorrow with another one. Bye!